The unexamined life is not worth living. That's a quote from Socrates. And I've seen in my own life that asking the right question has the power to transform my life entirely. I mean, can you imagine asking one question and your whole perspective about life changes? Well, here is that question. But before I say disclaimer, because 99% of people will hear this question for the first time will not understand it. Or I would say not understand fully what I mean with it. And therefore the, the power that it can have in their life. So some will return to the question, not to this video, but to the question itself. And we will see the power it can have. With that being said, here it is. What is the number one problem that if solved would solve all my other problems. Because think about it, if there is such a solution to that problem, then you would not have any problems anymore. Do you see what I mean here? If there was one problem that you could solve and therefore all the other problems would disappear, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, you have problems every day, right? Maybe small problems, sometimes big problems, sometimes problems that are very short-lived and some of them just are there for years or maybe even decades. And I'm asking, what if there was one solution to all of those problems. What is the one problem that if solved will solve all other problems? My answer, the mind, human mind. My mind is at the root of all my perceived problems in my life. And I say perceived because problems are only problems because of thought, right? Do you see this? Problems are only problems because of my thoughts. And thoughts are product of the mind and our thinking that happens to most of us without control. It just happens here and the inner voice that keeps talking that makes us feel we have a problem. But problems are not real. They are concepts created by thought. If you could stop thinking right now if you would never think again would you still feel you have problems and i don't try to be vague but you can even go as far as it what is really a problem i mean what what is a problem i'm sure you have been conditioned to think it is bad that problem is an association with something bad but i've asked you right now what does a problem really mean what is a problem then you would maybe give examples of things that give you a negative feeling right and this happens because of thought you feel negative about your problems that you perceive that way because of thoughts and not the ones that are useful to you. And what I mean with that is you can think, use that, people have used it decades long. What I'm trying to say is there's two different types of thoughts, the effective thoughts and the ineffective thoughts. The ineffective ones are for sure the ones that cause you to feel negative and bad about your life, about your problems. And the effective ones, well, you can argue what is really effective that's coming from thought, but well, this mouse, for example, this mouse, you could say, well, people have designed it this way and it is solving a problem in my life. It is useful, whatever that means. And thought has created that. And those you could say are effective thoughts. They are controlled by the person. I'm talking about the ineffective thoughts, the ones that you, you just listen to this inner voice or you don't even listen. It just happens and you think it is you speaking in here. I mean, when you're lying down about to go to sleep at night, you want to sleep, right? But then this keeps going and going and it takes you ages sometimes to fall asleep. That's what I mean with ineffective thoughts. So hopefully that is clear. Now back to the concept of problems. What is really a problem if you're going to... And please remove that if because it will happen. Let me repeat what I just said. What is really a problem if you're going to... And more so, is a problem? Is a problem? Think about it. And to be very honest to you, I've been afraid of that for... I don't know how long, whenever I first started really thinking about it. But recently, I've experienced so many moments where I just feel at peace. I would say, finally, at peace with that. And I don't say this is always the case. I'm not there yet. But I, I would say I would have never thought. I even thought that almost fearing that was a good thing. I mean, what do you have to live for if you don't fear that? That was my belief. The ones who do not fear that have not been going for in their lives. That's what I believed. Maybe that was another thought of the mind to, to basically work around the ego and not me trying basically saying, well, yeah, I am actually afraid because that's what it was. And that's what it still is sometimes. I'm still afraid of sometimes. And I try to find out why. You may do that for yourself too. But recently I've had many moments where I just am at peace with that. You may ask, why is that? Because there is silence, quiet. No mind, no inner voice, just experience, just nature's beauty. It often happens when I'm outside. And for the people who are looking for a pattern is always when there's no involuntary thought going on. There's no thinking. It is just me looking, looking and experiencing. Well, usually when I'm outside and just pure, just nature, the sunset, whatever it is. And it's not about during the rain as well. It doesn't matter if it's beautiful or not, but it is really when this is quiet 
And I was actually about to say, I highly recommend you should go outside and experience more of nature. Just look and, and try to not think. But this is, this doesn't work. All these recommendations, they just don't go anywhere. And it's still part of me, part of the conditioning that I try to recommend things that have proven to be useful, effective for me. But it is the very recommendation part that it just, it, it doesn't matter if I recommend it or not. Because I just spoke it already, not the recommendation part, but just the thing itself. And you either get inspired by it or not. It's not bad if you don't get inspired by it. And it's also not good if you get inspired by it and now experience the same things. And that just happens, right? And just look at your own life to see what I mean there. Because so many people have tried to recommend you things. And you maybe do them. Maybe most of the times not. At least not, I, I have never... Well, I've rarely done that because I'm very stubborn. But when I see a point, I try it, but then usually it falls away. The thing doesn't last or whatever. So the, it's almost like the least forced I am to do it. And whatever that internal pressure may feel like. The least pressure there is for, for me to keep doing it as a habit, almost so to speak. The more effective it is. Because it's really coming from within me. Instead of someone else saying, well, you should keep doing it, blah, blah, blah. And, and it, consciously or subconsciously, I know, well, it's not actually doing something for me. So that's really what I'm trying to say. Anyways, is really a problem? That's a question I can't answer for you. So may you find some silence in your life to hear the answer. Now back to the main question. What is the one problem that if solved would solve all other problems in my life? That problem is that I do not have control, full control over my thoughts. If I can solve that, then all of the other problems would fade away. Involuntary thoughts, they distort reality. They do it like this. They make you not see everything like it is. Well, this is true, right? You get the point, it's almost like water. It's a different picture, it's not reality. So then what is reality? Well, reality is that life has no meaning. What can there be meaningful if we are going to so reality is that we will sooner or later. Reality is not, I do not have enough money, so I feel bad. Reality is also not, I can't have kids, so I miss something in my life. And reality is also not, well, th the doctor tells me I have cancer, so I feel so sad, I can't stop myself from crying. This is all not reality. This is all this going on. And it has such power over your life. How about solving that? Finding the truth in each and every situation is the solution to all your perceived problems in your life. It is truth that liberates, not your efforts to be free. That's a quote from Jiro Krishnamurti, who has inspired me to very much find the answer to this problem. And if you can find the truth in a situation, then there is not a problem anymore. There is no pain, there is no suffering, there is no hope. The truth is the solution to all of your problems and don't you want to solve all of your problems my friend i mean it's so obvious to me but it almost seems like the harder i shout it from the roofs that this is really the thing in life that you want to solve for yourself it almost seems like the harder i say it, the louder i shout the less effective it becomes and i think you should not do that i think the serious person that well that's the person i'm trying to to speak to who, who can see this for him or herself so let me give you an example let's say it's monday morning you have a pimple on your chest and you go to the doctor you hope for the best but he tells you it's dangerous so you do a scan you come back to him and he tells you you have cancer and 99 percent of people would be shocked right they would be paralyzed burst out in tears Everyone you know would be immersed in pain after they hear this. And you, you yourself, you would feel pain, right? You would probably feel so much sadness that you can barely breathe when the doctor tells you this. Now why is that? Because you don't know the truth. You don't know the truth to the situation. What is the truth in this specific situation? That you will sooner than you expect it, right? This is it. If you're in your 20s or 30s, I'm not sure who's watching this, maybe older, maybe younger, you probably expect you have 50, 60 more years to live, right? Or at least you have the assumption you will live a long time still. This is a belief and it's very deeply rooted. Everyone has this belief. It's not reality. Reality is that you are alive right now and right now and right now and that you can any second, this can stop. And I'm not here to say I, do, I know what happens after that. But I'm also not here to discuss that because it's not interesting to me. Maybe to you it is. But then please, well, look at all the weird theories that go around this subject.
there's plenty of gurus who love to talk about this stuff. But just because everyone assumes that they will live until 80, doesn't make it true. And you can say, well, I know this. I've seen people who much earlier, this person, this friend, at 20, this. But you don't know. This is true. You would be very lucky if you really knew. And I'm not saying that I know that I live every day knowing this. I'm getting there. But it's really difficult. The conditioning is very deep that we just live until 80 years old and that we have time. All, all of this. This is so deeply ingrained in us. As long as you don't see that you will die with an open to-do list, an open dreams list, a bucket list, a wish list, all of it full of problems and things you still want to do, things you want to achieve, things you want to show the world. As long as you keep living in the illusion and you do not accept that this will happen, that you will die with all of these open loops, then you will feel consequences of living in this illusion. What are the consequences of this illusion? Pain, suffering, temporary happiness, and above all this indescribable hurting feeling this pressuring feeling on your chest when the doctor tells you you have cancer because now this illusion bursts goes away do you see this that is a consequence of this illusion that you live in right now and the truth will set you free and the truth is that you will with unanswered emails unchecked to do's open problems in work or family life and above all all of the dreams that have not come to fruition and I say above all because this was the thing that after I looked into it was fearing me the most, you know. If I was about to die right now, then I would have so many dreams left to fulfill. And especially, I would say my ego, the ego that would not be fed with the status I would get from showing the world what I was capable of, becoming the best at whatever I did. But the truth is that you will die with these open dreams, goals you haven't reached, status you haven't received, and that you were not able to show what you were fully capable of this is the absolute truth my friend your story doesn't end like a fairy tale you without a perfect end and as long as today isn't perfect as long as right now isn't perfect then tomorrow can never give you what you look for but right now can only be perfect if you see the truth can no longer cause fear in you if you don't postpone it so are you delaying the very idea of have you delayed it? I was escaping this whole damn thing. I was running away from it. I didn't want to think about it even. But I'm glad I stopped running away. But I'm not here to convince you again. The serious person looks into it him or herself. I'm just sharing the truth. You are a man or woman. And it can happen. Any moment. And the one who can wake up accepting in the morning can live in peace until the evening. And isn't this pure peace? that we all want in our life, peace from all of our perceived problems. How to get there, you may ask. How do I find the truth in everything, in all my situations, all my problems? I understand your questions, but they are not questions of the one who gets there. They are not the questions of the one who finds the answers. Because the person who gets there doesn't ask how-to questions. How do I do this? Do you have the steps for me to do, to take? Because the person who gets there has seen that nobody around them is at peace not temporarily not during yoga class all the time he or she has seen that nobody is at peace and have you seen someone who doesn't ask how to do this how to do that have you not seen so many videos on youtube sharing how to do this seven ways to get there seven steps to feel this if this really worked if you really could feel peaceful for the rest of your life if you could solve this one problem in your life by watching one youtube video that's that tells you the ways to get there then a lot of people would not have these problems anymore right so if these seven steps to become jesus worked then anybody would be jesus because even your father and mother have seen these checklists these lists post anywhere whether it's in a magazine or online if they are using a pc your grandma even has read these posts in a magazine or something so what does it really take your highest priority it needs to be your highest priority it must be your highest priority in life to solve this one problem that will solve all the other problems in your life and why is this so i mean just look at your own life and the things you got thus far didn't you get all the money you have today because it was your main priority didn't you get the relationship that one started because it was your main priority back then everything important in your life that you have or have gotten was once your priority that's why you got it now how did you got it 
How did you get that relationship? How did you get your money? I'm asking you directly right now. How did you get your money? Can you tell me? Can you share me the list? And now I follow your steps. Can I then get the same money? The same girlfriend? The same husband? The answer is you don't know. And even if you knew, you figure it out. It doesn't work for me. You figured it out because you wanted it. So do you want to solve all of your problems in your life? If the answer is a real yes, then that's the person that I'm talking to. And I'm not saying that to persuade you into thinking that you should want to solve all your problems in your life and that this is the thing you should now try to achieve. I'm only talking to the person who has seen this, who really understands, not me, but the message. And if you do, then naturally after watching this video, you will forge a path. Maybe not right away, maybe not tomorrow, but if you really realize what I said, then you can't let this idea go. That just happens and you find your way. That's it. I'm going to keep myself alive now by preparing some food because my mind tells me I'm hungry. Talk soon. And here's my poem about the essence of this video. Thoughts create our problems. Illusions cause us pain. The truth can set us free if we break this mental chain. We think we live forever, but could come today if you can see that in this moment worries fade away so if you can see reality crystal clear and true that grass is green the sky is blue that will come for me and you that is true but most would never really knew so may you realize this today my friend may peace find you and all you do